Wolfie, make a tips and tricks video. Where's the tips and tricks video? When is tips and tricks? Well, here it is. 20 PvZ3 tips and tricks. I have been playing the Plants vs Zombies tower defense games for a long time, and over that time I have gained some experience and knowledge. Even though PvZ3 has only been out for a couple of months, I have put together this video going over 20 tips and tricks for Plants vs Zombies 3, so you can become a PvZ3 master and make Master Uguay proud. This first tip is super helpful and can be applied to all the PvZ tower defense games, including Plants vs Zombies 3. Number 1. This is a super common mistake people make. Place your sunflowers a little bit forward to leave room for your shooting plants, around columns 3 and 4. The logic behind placing sunflowers a bit forward is that it is generally easier to replace your sunflowers than it is to replace your attacking plants due to the higher sun cost, and it gives your attackers more time to attack the zombies, which can be the determining factor of if you win or lose the level. Number 2. Spam down as many sunflowers as possible. Don't just stop at two rows. Keep going. Keep placing those sunflowers in the front. Don't be scared. Place them in the back. Place them everywhere. Just keep spamming the sunflowers to increase your economy. Make that money flow. Sun is what makes the plant economy go round after all. And also, don't forget to collect that sun. I know it sounds simple, but sometimes you'll forget and if you don't pay attention. Tip 3. If you are able to do it, it's better to save up for a permanent attacking plant like pea shooter or bamboo spudding rather than placing down a squash to deal with the zombie because the pea shooter will be able to deal with future zombies in that lane rather than just squash dealing with that one zombie. It's a positive sun investment most of the time. Number 4. When a pigeon zombie is munching on a plant like a walnut, they cannot summon pigeons. Use this to your advantage to stop the pigeons from overrunning your lawn. Just slap a walnut down in front of pigeon feeder. Number 5. If you have infinite brains, don't use power-ups to finish the level because there is no punishment for trying again unless you really really need to beat the level after being stuck on it for 50 years. Just make sure when you're beating it, you use as little power-ups as possible. Number 6. On levels with elevation, make sure you place your shooters in spaces that make sense. For example, don't place a pea shooter right in front of a hill, and don't place a straight shooter on top of a hill, causing the pea shooter to miss. Number 7. Bowling Zombie will take out your plants pretty fast if you don't deal with him. So try to squash the Bowling Zombie or block the Bowling Zombie with a walnut as fast as you can. Number 8. When a level says very hard, try bringing some of those pre-game power-ups like the Gumball Machine, Sun Boost, and Rake. They can come in very handy in making the level a lot easier to clear. Just the Rake defeating the first zombie gives you enough time to get a few extra sunflowers down, making a huge difference throughout the level. Number 9. Unlike PvZ1 and 2, Cherry Bombs and Jalapenos instantly kill Gargantuos, which is OP. Also, it would be cool if Cherry Bomb and Jalapeno were regular plants rather than power-ups. Hint hint nudge nudge pop cap. Number 10. PvZ3 waves cannot be stalled. They will always spawn timer based. Using this knowledge, damage is usually more valuable than stalling. For example, a snow pea will take twice as long to kill a basic compared to a pea shooter. This would normally be fine in other PvZ games because the zombies get slowed, so therefore it does not make it very far. But in PvZ3, the double amount of time to kill means double zombie buildup because of timer based waves, which makes damage more favorable in PvZ3 rather than stalling. Number 11. Lightning weed is exponentially good to crowds of zombies and pigeons. Lightning weed effectiveness when spammed looks something like this graph. This is because lightning weed's attack will chain onto other zombies up to three additional zombies, making lightning weeds deal essentially four hits of damage in one attack against crowds. Also on levels with lightning weed, just spam the heck out of it. It just walks. It just does. Number 12. Planton is useless. Seriously, editing Wolfie here. Well, it turns out they fixed the Plantone bug and now it Plantone is kind of useful. So yeah, don't place it ever. You can just hover any plant over the fog to see right through the fog, effectively making Plantone's job useless. Plantone is just throwing sun in the dumpster, man. Number 13. On nighttime levels, it is usually a good idea to lose your lawnmower early on to kill the first few zombies so you can focus on placing down extra sunflowers rather than defense. 
Sunflowers are extra important on nighttime stages because no sun falls from the sky. You can also get a similar effect if you're willing to use a rake power up. Number 14. Okay, this one's pretty obvious, but it's helpful. Make sure you always spend your taco tickets so you can get the lunch boxes with power ups for completing the story. Also, the story can be kind of entertaining sometimes, like when Dave grows a taco tree. Number 15. Plants vs Zombies 3 has dynamic difficulty, which means it gets harder the more you win and easier the more you lose. Because of this, when you have infinite brains, you could lose the level over and over again to lower the difficulty in theory. I have not tried this, but I assume it would work. Just make sure you have the zombies actually eat your brains instead of backing out. Number 16. Chili Pepper freezes zombies for about the same amount of time it takes a sunflower to produce one sun around 22 to 25 seconds. Knowing this knowledge, you can calculate how much sun you will get and if it is worth it to use a chili pepper or not. Number 17. Grapes of Wrath shoots seven grapes that deal damage equal to half the health of a basic zombie that splashes in a one tile area. If the grape ends up landing in an empty tile, it will stay there until a zombie touches it or a plant is placed on top. Grapes of Wrath will also knock the zombies that are close to your house back when it activates. So uh, number 17 was kind of just an info dump about Grapes of Wrath, but still useful. Next up, number 18. The 3 Pedal special event where you get free power-ups, the rake, sun boost, and gumball went on a win streak of 3 or more is the best time to grind levels. Having those power-ups at the start of every level makes the game much easier to win. But I do understand that the event is not around all the time, and sometimes you just want to play the game. Number 19. Bonk Choi is super overpowered and can solo up to a conehead without any support. To get the most effectiveness out of a Bonk Choi, place it in a puddle if available, place a walnut in front of the Bonk Choi, or place the Bonk Choi behind water because zombies move slower in water, allowing the Bonk Choi to get extra punches in. And finally, number 20. Bamboo Shoot's attack will deal enough damage to instantly kill an imp, making it useful if, if you need a method to take out that imp that goes way too far down the lawn because you looked away for literally two seconds for real though imps are fast well there you have it 20 tips and tricks for plants vs zombies 3 let me know in the comments if you liked the video and would want to see more tips and tricks videos i can make them for any of the pvz games this video took a ton of effort for me to make anyways thank you for watching leave a like and subscribe also i have a discord server in the description if you want to join hint hint